dear students in the previous session we have considered the classification of joints into three broad categories what are they they are the fibrous joints and what is next we have considered the cartilaginous joints the third one is the synovial joints in this session we will discuss about the synovial joints their general features since majority of the joints come under the synovial joints this has to be discussed in detail in this session we will consider the features of the synovial joints so what is the other name for synovial joints they are called diarthrosis so diarthrosis means freely movable joints that means wide range of movement is possible in these joints another feature is most of the joints of appendicular skeleton are synovial joints in synovial joints articular surfaces are covered by cartilage you are able to see the cartilage covering the articular surfaces and it is called articular cartilage and there will be ligaments that are holding the bones together and it is having a joint cavity which is filled with synovial fluid and the joint is enclosed by articular capsule there are two components in the articular capsule so one is the outer fibrous capsule then inner synovial membrane both together constitute the joint capsule or articular capsule sometimes the joint cavity is divided completely or incompletely by means of an articular disc or meniscus of fibro cartilage so the synovial joints at diarthrosis are freely movable joints with wide range of movement and they are seen in the appendicular skeleton articular surface is covered by hyaline cartilage ligaments hold the bones together joint cavity presents synovial fluid and it is enclosed by articular capsule sometimes the joint cavity is divided by articular disc or meniscus of fibro cartilage what are the factors that contribute for the stability of the joint one is the bony contours see the bony contour of the articulating bones so they are reciprocally curved one is the convex and other is the concave surface that contributes for the stability then the next factor is the ligaments you can see the ligaments so what are these things inside the ligaments towards the joint cavity is the capsule fibrous capsule or capsular ligament and then you are seeing the synovial membrane and the cavity so the factors contributing for stability of joint or 
bony contour with ligaments then the muscles acting on the joint and an invisible factor that is the atmospheric pressure so these are the factors contributing for the stability of the joint yes what are all the structural components in a synovial joints so they are considered as follows one is the articulating bones that are articulating articular cartilage the articular capsule joint cavity the articular disc accessory ligaments synovial fluid and bursae so the synovial cavity its general features will be discussed under this eight headings so what are the articulating bones articular cartilage articular capsule joint cap cavity articular disc accessory ligaments synovial fluid and bursae let us consider the articulating surfaces these two are the articulating surfaces of the hip joint and these surfaces are called as male surface and female surface so the male surface is larger and convex in all directions so the example for male surface is the head of humerus or head of femur in this case you are seeing the head of femur then the female surface it is smaller and concave in all directions so this is the acetabulum of the hip bone so which is the female surface and it is smaller and concave in all directions the examples for this female surface is uh, the glenoid fossa of scapula in relation with the shoulder joint and acetabulum of hip bone in relation to hip joint at least two bones form joint so here you are see the two bones that are forming the hip joint there will be periosteum which covers the outer surface of the bones where it is not covered with articular cartilage so except the articular cartilage covered area the outer surfaces of the articulating bones or covered with periosteum now let us see what is articular cartilage the articular surfaces the bones that are coming in contact with one another or covered with hyaline cartilage so this is the articular cartilage and there is exception the bones that are ossified in membrane that is membranous bones the bones that develop in membrane are covered by fibrous cartilage but not hyaline cartilage so the articular surfaces are covered with hyaline cartilage except the bones that are ossified in membrane which are covered by fibrous cartilage so the examples for that exception is the sternoclavicular and acromioclavicular joints 
which are covered by fibrous cartilage. Hope it is clear now. Where the articular cartilage is not hyaline. And other feature of the articular cartilage is it is avascular. So when it is avascular, how does it receive its nutrition? It's by diffusion through synovial fluid, blood vessels in the medullary cavity and vascular network at the periphery of the synovial membrane. So, the articular cartilage is avascular and it is, receives its nutrition through diffusion of the synovial fluid and blood vessels in the medullary cavity and vascular network at the periphery of the synovial membrane. In this picture, what joint it is? It is the shoulder joint. We are seeing the head of the humerus covered with this glistening white one, articular cartilage, which is hyaline cartilage you are seeing and it forms the male surface and then here we are seeing the glenoid fossa glenoid fossa in relation with the scapula and which is also covered with the cartilage and there are three nodes n o no for the articular cartilage what are they they are non-nervous, no perichondrium, not covered by synovial membrane. And to this you can add that there are no blood vessels, avascular, that also you can add it. And it is having the male surface covered with articular cartilage and in this part, the articular cartilage is thick at the center and thin at the periphery. Whereas, it is opposite in the female surface, where it is thick at the periphery and thin at the center. What is the function of articular cartilage? So, articular surfaces are lubricated by synovial fluid. So, they provide a slippery surface for movement and the articular cartilages reduce friction and absorb the shock. That is the function of the articular cartilage. The articular cartilages, they show age-related changes. So, either degenerative changes or proliferative changes. So, what are these degenerative changes? In the central part, cartilage is replaced with fibrous tissue. Proliferative changes which take place at the periphery where cartilage cells will be replaced with bone cells which are known as osteo. So, the age-related changes can be or degenerative changes which take place in the central part of the cartilage which is replaced with fibrous tissue whereas the proliferative changes take place at the periphery of the cartilage where the cells are replaced with bone cells which are known as osteophytes and in this picture what you are seeing is the x-ray of the hand and you are seeing the metacarpal bones and see this metacarpal bone like an error to it you are seeing a projection so this is the osteophyte where the cartilage cells are replaced with bone cells 
and what is the importance of the articular cartilage if it is damaged it cannot be replaced by hyaline cartilage so what replaces it it's replaced by fibrous tissue now let us consider the articular capsule so this is the articular capsule and it consists of two layers what are they outer fibrous capsule and inner synovial membrane now let us talk about the fibrous capsule so this capsule if you observe it is attached to the articulating ends of bones so like a cuff and it is formed by dense irregular connective tissue and it is pierced by blood vessels and nerves in some places there will be openings in the fibrous capsule so through which next to it is the synovial membrane that will come out as a bursa near the tendon of a neighboring muscle and the fibrous capsule is flexible it permits movement at the joint and its strength tensile strength this is dislocation of the joint so it's a protective one so the articular capsule is heavy to this what are the outer fibrous capsule and inner synovial membrane so if you consider the fibrous capsule it is attaching the articulating ends of bones and it is fitting like a cuff and it is a dense irregular connective tissue and is pierced by red vessels and nerves and it's it shows some openings in some places and through those openings the synovial membrane comes out as bursa near the tendon of a neighboring muscle and it is flexible so permits movements at the joint and its tensile strength places this location of the joint the fibrous capsule is reinforced by the capsular ligament or true ligament and accessory ligaments so what are these capsular or true ligaments they are nothing but the thickenings of fibrous capsule accessory ligaments they can be within the capsule or outside the capsule so if they are within the capsule they are called intracapsular ligaments and if they are outside the capsule they are called the extracapsular ligaments these accessory ligaments are distinct from fibrous capsule please make a note of it so accessory ligaments are different from capsular ligaments and they are different from fibrous capsule then what are the functions of the articular capsule they will be binding the articulating bones and they support the synovial membrane underneath fibrous capsule then other action or function of this particular capsule is watchdog action of the capsule because there are several sensory nerve endings or ramifying on the capsules so they nerves when they are stimulated they produce contraction of the muscles and they pay they project the protect the joints so that is known as 
watchdog action of the capsule so there are several sensory nerve endings are there ramifying in the capsule and these nerves when they are stimulated produce contraction of the muscles by their reflexes and they pay to protect the joints and this that is why the articular capsule of which the fibrous capsule is known as watchdog of the joint then the other component of the articular capsule is the synovial membrane this is the synovial membrane outside you are seeing the fibrous capsule outside which are the supporting ligaments so what is this synovial membrane it's a layer of loose connective tissue and it is consisting of fibers that is elastic fibers and adipose tissue it lines the whole interior of the joint except articulating surfaces which are covered by hot cartilage hyaline cartilage and the synovial membrane is highly vascular and cellular what are the functions of synovial membrane the, this membrane secretes synovial fluid which provides nutrition to the articular cartilage and the synovial membrane also has phagocytic function as it removes particulate matter and worn out cartilage cells and it produces hyaluronic acid that maintains the viscosity so the synovial membrane is secretory as it secretes synovial fluid which provides nutrition to the articular cartilage and is phagocytic removes the particulate matter worn out cartilage cells and produces hyaluronic acid that maintains the viscosity then it presents a joint cavity and between the articular cartilages you are seeing a space this is the joint cavity and it is filled with synovial fluid and this joint cavity can be partially or completely subdivided by an articular disc or meniscus so between the articular surfaces is the joint cavity filled with synovial fluid and the cavity may be partially or completely subdivided by an articular disc or meniscus so if there is the articular disc or meniscus the single joint cavity will be divided into an upper compartment and lower compartment then what is this articular disc or meniscus and it is uh, the pad of fibrocartilage so this is a knee joint which is uh, formed by the lower end of femur and upper end of tibia and in the relation with this tibia you are seeing the meniscus a lateral meniscus and a medial meniscus so these are pads of fibrocartilage so which facilitate articulating bones of different shapes to fit more snugly that is the function of the articular disc or meniscus so here you can see the between the femur and the tibia the two menisci are seen some of the joints are completely divided by the presence of articular disc of fibrocartilage for example sternoclavicular joint temporomandibular joint and inferior radio ulnar joints 
these three joints are completely divided by the particular disc of fibrocartilage. There are some joints where the disc divides the joint cavity incompletely. That is, there is incomplete division of the joint cavity. Examples are knee joint, which you are seeing, and acromioclavicular joint. What is the function of the articular disc or meniscus? Its function is lubrication of the joint to prevent friction and it provides surface for increasing the range of movements that is gliding movements. So lubrication of the joint and increase the surface but increasing the range of movements that is gliding movement these are the functions of the articular let us see what are the accessory ligaments so i was mentioning previously that accessory ligaments can be intracapsular or extra capsular the intracapsular will be located inside the articular capsule and they will be surrounded by folds of synovial membrane example cruciate ligaments of knee joint which you are seeing here there is an anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligaments and these can be seen when you cut the articular capsule so inside the capsule so intracapsular ligament example cruciate ligaments of knee joint extracapsular ligaments so these are the ligaments located outside the articular capsule but attached to the articular capsule so here you can see outside the capsule one on the medial side other on the later side of the knee joint you are seeing so they are the tibial collateral ligament medial v fibular collateral ligament lateral v so these are the examples of extra capsular ligaments so let us see what is synovial fluid it's a clear viscous fluid and it fills the joint cavity and what is it it's a dialysate of plasma to which hyaluronic acid is added by the synovial membrane what are the functions of synovial fluid one is lubrication it means it reduces friction in the joint the synovial fluid reduces friction in the joint then the other function is nutritive function as it supplies nutrients to the articular cartilage and it removes metabolic waste products because there are no blood vessels in the cartilage this function is taken by the synovial fluid and it is also phagocytic cytic as it removes the microbes and debris that will be accumulating because of mechanical damage from the use of the joint. So the functions of synovial fluid are lubrication, nutrition to the articular cartilage, removal of metabolic waste products and phagocytic functions. What is the clinical importance of synovial fluid? The accumulation of fluid can cause swelling or effusion. So, arthritis or an injury to the ligament of the knee can cause effusion. Type of fluid that accumulates depends on the underlying condition or type of injury. So, accumulation of synovial fluid causing swelling. It is 
due to arthritis or injury to the ligaments of knee is the common type of free depends on the underlying condition or disease or type of injury so the procedure they perform for withdrawing or aspirating the synovial fluid sample from the joint using a needle and syringe is called joint aspiration or arthrocentesis now the last component which we are going to consider under the structural components of synovial joint is the bursa so the word bursa which means pars is derived from latin bursa is singular bursae is plural we can define the bursa as a small fluid filled closed sac like structure that is present in some of the synovial joints so bursae or small fluid -filled closed sac like structures that are present in some synovial joints and where are they located they are located between the bone and muscle or tendon or ligaments so these are seen wherever there is friction between the tendon of a muscle and the bone or cartilage or other tendon so wherever there is friction the bursae are seen and the common site where they are seen is in the limbs what is the structure of the bursa these are lined by synovial membrane and filled with capillary layer of viscous fluid called synovial fluid the consistency of synovial fluid is that of a raw egg white then what are the functions of bursae within the synovial joints these reduce mechanical friction between bone and other structures so what are those other structures can be a tendon or a muscle so they act by cushioning the two structures that are coming in contact so they reduce mechanical friction between bone and other structure the acting as a cushion and the allow free movement the bursae are present in almost all major joints of the body there are different types of bursae they are the synovial bursa adventitious or accidental bursa subcutaneous bursa subtendinous bursa submuscular bursa depending on their site where they are located so synovial bursa example is the deep infra petalar bursa and supra petalar bursa in relation with the knee you are seeing then there is the adventitious or accidental bursa the subcutaneous bursa which is superficial infra petalar and the prepetalar bursa and auricranial bursa in relation with the elbow there are the subtendinous bursa which will be seen in relation with the calcaneus it is the retrocalcaneal bursa and there is a, a bursa underneath the muscle submuscular bursa example is the pes anserinus bursa in relation with the knee joint we will be we will, we will go into details of this bursae around the knee when we talk about the 
enjoy. Let us consider the verse a little more in detail. The synovial person. Majority of the births are synovial. Example, close integration with the knee joint and shoulder joint. Then, adventitious or accidental bursa. These will develop if any surface of the body is subjected to repeated stress. So, they are seen. If the surface of the body is subjected to repeated stress. Example is the bunyan. So what is bunyan? See the picture. It is a deformity of grade 2. The bursa. The bursa at the metatarsophalangeal joint of big 2 is swollen. And head of metatarsal is tilting to a side and you will see a large bumpy scene. Okay, that is the bunion you can see here. So, inflammation. This is the area. So, where there will be a bursa at the metatarsophalangeal joint of big toe which is swollen and head of metatarsal tilts to a side and large bump will be seen. The other is the subcutaneous bursa, so which is seen between the skin and the bony prominence near the joint. The example is the olecranon bursa or student's elbow, which you are seeing in the picture. The other examples are the prepetalar bursa or house mite's knee, the superficial infrapetalar bursa and Achilles bursa. What is student's elbow or olecranon bursa? It is located between the loose skin of elbow and ulna. When inflamed, there will be pain, swelling and redness of elbow with restriction of movement. If infected, the bursa will open and the pus gets Drained. The other examples I told you is the prepetalar bursa or housemates bursa. The other type is the subtendinous bursa. It is present between the tendon and bone or between adjacent tendons or between the tendon and the ligament. They are seen in the grids. Example is the retrocalcaneal bursa. So this is the retrocalcaneal bursa and it is present from birth. Then submuscular bursa. These are seen between the muscles. Examples in relation with the greater trochanter of femur. And in relation with the iliopsoas muscle and in relation with medial and lateral gastronomous muscles, subpopliteal bursa, pes ansari bursa. This is the pes ansari bursa you are seeing. These are the examples for the submuscular bursa. Is the clinical importance of bursa? It's bursitis. It's inflammation of the bursa and it results from repeated friction or trauma or infection. The inflammation causes multiplication of synovial cells and increase in collagen and fibrin rich fluid production. Granulation tissue will replace the synovial lining and fibrosis occurs. Cushioning effect of the bursa on bones, tendons and muscles near joints will be affected. The most common locations 
but bursitis on the shoulder elbow or hip so the clinical importance of bursa is bursitis this inflammation of the bursa which results from repeat friction or trauma or infection there will be multiplication of synovial cells increased amount of collagen fibers and granulation tissue will replace the synovial lining and fibrosis of the synovial membrane and loss of cushioning effect of the bursa the most common location is the shoulder and elbow now you have understood the general features of synovial joint the various components of a synovial joint starting from the articulating surfaces the articular cartilage the articular capsule articular disc joint cavity the synovial membrane and then the bursa the accessory ligaments we have considered hope you have understood the general features of synovial joint which is an important one both from the examination point of view and in the clinical practice